All right, so that was uh, the song Teenage Angst by The Dark, which you can find on their website, thedarkofficial.com. Guys, welcome to the Torsen Hair Experience. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, earlier, I was uh, peeling an orange, and uh, it had been like forever since I've done that. When was the last time you guys uh, peeled like an orange or something? Last night. Oh, yeah? <laughs> was that peeling clothes or peeling an orange? Uh, both, actually. Yeah, I'm yes. pretty sure it was. <laughs> You, Sonny, when was the last time? Every night, my girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. I don't believe in oranges. So. No? Are you afraid of the scurvy or something like that? Or? Yeah. <laughs> you like bananas, yeah. that's why. <laughs> I prefer bananas to oranges. It's all that splashing. I like oranges. <laughs> oranges. Oranges are right? good. I was, I was peeling it. Yeah, it was, it's real weird because anytime you peel an orange, um, your hands, they get all citrusy and then all of a sudden, like, they get all, I don't know, I, for, for lack of a better term, like, spiky, you know, because, like, you're... you're yeah, and if you yeah. have a cut, wow, yeah, that's man, that about. Yeah. They get kind of wet, actually. Right. And if you wave them really fast, it smells like that. Yeah. Which is, yeah, that's right. nice. Yes. I mean, we're smelling that in here. Oh, do it. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. I can as well, actually. Can you smell it, honey? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my, my hands got all you? sticky, and uh, I wanted to go to the bathroom, but somebody, and I'm not saying who, but I think Brandon was in there messing it up. I was in the bathroom, but I was not doing anything bad just for once, actually. <laughs> 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 it's the first time. It's Mexican food. Because <laughs> I just hate when your hands are sticky, and like, you, be, like, there's, you can't... You know, it trusts me like you know if my hands are sticky, they're not gonna get stick on me for sure. Oh, that's not good. There you go. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> <laughs> What's the next thing about what? What is it? Sorry. It's the next big thing. It's the next big thing. Yeah. The next big thing. <laughs> um. So on the couch with us right now, we have Brandon, Justin, Topher, and Sonny from the dark. Welcome, you guys. Welcome. Here. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, let's talk about uh, the song "Teenage Angst." Uh, I, w- were we the first to play that, or because I know it's uh, been playing uh, on on the radio? Yeah, you guys were the, pl- the were the first ones actually. Oh, thank you, yeah. thank That's you. Awesome. I really like the awesome. song. Thank you. It was. It was um, I don't know. Like I, I was listening to it, and I, I could really feel the 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 teenage angst, I guess, from it. it if you know, was was that what you were going for? In yeah, we were or? totally going for that. We were going for that with the production. We were going with that, like uh, for, with the lyrics, with the old meaning, and uh, we're gonna just work on um, coming out with a new video for the song that is just gonna be very consistent with the lyrics and the old song meaning for sure. You have a Kickstarter for that, don't you? Yes, we do. Yes. Yeah. So everybody needs to hit that up, donate, and help these guys get that out there and happen. For Absolutely. Well, now, now, why do you guys need fans to support you guys for this uh, video? I think it's, an, it's the next step. It's like, as an indie band, uh, that's the only way that you can really support yourself. Uh, and that's the best way that you can find out if, like, you know, what's your real fan base out there. Because it's really easy for everyone, like, you know, just liking your band on Facebook or whatever else. Uh, but people, they're going to really support you as an artist and when you're trying to do something like that and they're gonna help you like just donating money for example that's a real good way to see who are your real fans and most of the like, biggest artists actually are doing the same thing for example in Europe IMX did the same thing mm-hmm. they founded like you know they all new album production like just asking for donations from their fans so I think it's actually a very modern concept, a very modern way for a band that just to get shit done, you know, without the help of any record company. Right. And are you guys uh, doing that with your music as well, doing a kind of a pay what you want type thing? Or, or uh, this is the first that? time that we're doing something like that because it was like a sort of test for our fans. It was a sort of test for us as well as a band. And so this is the first one, the first time that we're trying to do something like that. It's going over well. And probably will do that in the future, but no. But we just totally produce the old music by ourselves without the help of anybody. Because fortunately, we just had like you know someone uh, working out for like good connections, like for studios and whatever. So we didn't have to like just pay any money for like producing our thing. Didn't you uh, recently work with Tom Palmer? Yes, he mixed uh, our our single "Teenage Angst." Yeah, he's amazing. 
Yeah, he's he's a legend. He worked like with Robert Plant, Ozzy Osbourne. Like, yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely good stuff. Yes. How did that feel being in the studio with him? Did you? Uh, well, feel like you have arrived. Well, most of the time, so you just work with those people. You just let them work, really. Mm -hmm. You just like you know following his artist. And uh, there are two different kinds of producers that I learned in my. And from my experience, it's like there's there like you know those producers uh, that are not gonna consider you as an artist uh, just because they own it as you were like you know a very young artist. So they're just gonna do their own thing and they're not gonna care about you. And they're like you know those real legends. So they're like you know they have lots of experience, but they will love to share actually that experience with the other artists. And I think Tim is that kind of person. Actually, I think he really loves. To have someone else uh, next to him, like you know, asking him, like you know, as an artist, for his opinion about something, uh, and uh, just having him, like you know, just following and learning from him. He likes to be yeah. a teacher a little bit. Yeah, that's very true. We recently had uh, Tom Fletcher uh, from the Atomics on the couch, and uh, he's you know the legendary producer as well. And nice. he and I work together, and uh, the experience that comes out of that man. You know, just knowing the board and, you know, knowing where music is, where it's been and where it's going, it's, you know, you can't buy that and uh, it's, you know, it, it should be, you know, a wonderful experience for you all and, you know, to have that like, you know, moving on and going, wow. Ah, yeah, I absolutely. This, this person really, you know, helped me along with my career. No, what was weird was, uh, I think you guys were talking about uh, the tortoise and the hare. Uh, do you guys are all familiar with that? Uh, I'm uh, actually you? not. No? Yeah. The tortoise I'm and the hare is, do, do you guys want to tell yeah. them or do you want me to tell you them guys. the story? Sure. Uh, well, I mean, I'm not sure if I actually read the official book, but I know the story, the tortoise and the hare, the whole idea is that they're in a race and um, the tortoise is slow and steady, which is where that saying slow and steady wins a race. Okay. Because the hare keeps, you know, he runs out in front and he's all cocky, so he takes a break. I think you know, I heard the story and then he, yeah, he ends up losing because he's going too fast and he ends up screwing himself over. So. Okay. Yeah, okay. Slow and steady chugging along. No, I'm farther. sorry if I didn't laugh, so, <laughs> but I'm <laughs> Italian and I need it. No worries. Right. I don't understand. <laughs> but it's cool, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I think we have kind of like, you know, the same story. English? Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, we have a bunch of them. But you've never, never been a child, though. I just forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I forgot. They just skipped right I, just, I skipped. I skipped from three, and then I came back when I was like sixteen, and there's a huge hole in between. So I don't know what really happened about that. But who, who do you guys identify with? Do you guys identify more with like the tortoise character or the hare character? Well, I, yeah, myself, I would identify with uh, probably the hare, but influenced by the tortoise. You know, like I try to slow down, <laughs> be, you know, I'm gonna have that like ADHD mentality where like I live fast and do things kind of on impulse, but I try to slow down and, you know, take my time, but it doesn't always happen. I'm learning to be a tortoise. I'm definitely a hare. But I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning to be a tortoise. I follow Justin at this point. I follow me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, uh, I definitely live fast. I just like living fast, so I just I, I try to take a break sometimes, just like you know, thinking about things. Uh, but like by the time that I start thinking about that, it's already done. So it, you know, it's just it's just a different school, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Are, d does hair really like explain you, Max? As you know, I, I don't think it. Explains me. well, you know, there's the backstory, yeah, um, which you guys probably uh, I want to know about know. your yeah, hair, actually. You, you want to know about my hair? Right? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, it's curly. I this is my natural hair, and it's I good. I, I like your it's lovely. It. Yeah, I don't like when you straighten it, I you like know? it like this. Everybody keeps saying that, but I, I feel like you know, calmer because I look like so, you know, so what, what how's your natural hair like? This is it. This oh, is cool. Natural. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks really awesome. You should have straightened it, actually. Thank you. It looks well, better like this, I guess. I I don't know. <laughs> I well, guess. you haven't seen it straight. I, yeah. I just feel I feel calmer. I feel not so hair, mm -hmm. and uh, but that's not why we call it. Yeah. That. <laughs> Real quick, since since we're on the topic of hair, I've been really getting into like my hair because before I was just a shampoo guy. You know, I just throw shampoo or just a bar of soap, throw it on my hair. Soap. Yeah. Really? Just on the top. Gross. You know. But uh, I've been uh, diving into conditioner. 
I'm getting into the perils of conditioning my hair. But here's the thing: I don't have time to like shampoo and then you know condition it. I I, I decided did two in one. <laughs> I right? I did two in one because all my life I was taught that that was like the world would blow up if you did that. But then I started putting it and mixing it and putting it in my hair, and it seems to be a winning combination. Yeah, you have to take care. Yeah. You guys all have great hair. Appreciate well, it. Well, I, have, I haven't seen I your hair yet. Because he's wearing a hair. The mask, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm pretty sure it's good. It usually looks pretty fantastic. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we can vouch for him. <laughs> right? Your hair is a, an extension of yourself, you know? Is, is, is that how you stuff? Yeah. It's a process. That's what it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like mine takes forever to do. Really? How long does it take? Well, I mean, to actually the process of dyeing it and getting it to look like this is yeah. probably yeah. two and a half or three hours. Do you do we it yourself, to, or is no, there somebody that does it? I have a who does it, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's like sectioned off, so it's kind of like a zebra, you know. So and white, how black, high? White, black. How high is your mohawk? It's Last time I measured it was about nine inches wow. tall. So nice. Good, good, solid nine inches. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta. You gotta yeah, gotta I'm impressed with that. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, how old are you, Justin? I am 22. Well, enjoy that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I will. <laughs> Wise words from Sonny. <laughs> it doesn't happen all the time, actually. So. <laughs> yeah. How old are you? Are you, you, you don't I'm 30. You're 30? Yes. Wow, yeah. nice. I'm going to be 32 in a couple of days. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. Shit, I forgot it's your birthday almost. Yeah, what are you doing? Days. Mm. Are we partying? I said, that's the thing. I'm trying to be pretty good. Why? There's no even a good reason for being good. I know, but I mean, after 25 years, let's say that I started when I was seven, in a way or another one, so you kind of have to <laughs> slow down. You kind of have to slow down. You well, know? well, well, we gotta do something. I don't know, probably this year it's gonna be like Big Bear, a little bit of fire, we relax over there, we're gonna be grandpa. Younger isn't always better, sometimes younger is a little bit more foolish. You know what I mean? From a me mindset, it was a pain anyway. Yes, being young, but you know, <laughs> I, I still think that. Can you imagine you and I hanging out back in the days we were like 23, 24 years old, son, here? That's <laughs> why so it's a good combination. Right. Right. You guys have the, the wisdom, right. so I'll say it, and then right. we have the, the energy. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Are, are you guys uh, going to make another new album anytime soon, or is that uh, process already going? Uh, underway or what's going on well i mean um we haven't released a, an official album yet as the dark so okay we're uh working on um hopefully putting together an ep you know in the next year and uh that'll come out first that'll be the first step and then after that we definitely want to you know get into touring and build a fan base and then yeah eventually release an album and then hopefully there's no stopping after that you know right where, where are you guys recording right now um Brandon, you got that Studio one? Uh, <laughs> well, the whole pre-production process happens in my place. Okay. That's where, like, we record. Do, do not expect, like, you know, a super huge studio. It's just a home studio. But that's exactly what we need, all we need. And then we do the pre-production there. We record there. And then we recorded um, the single Teenage Angst at Energy Studios in North Erie, or Hollywood. Which is great. They had a great Halloween party. It was so much fun. Yeah, I, I, I missed it because actually we were uh, DJing for a century media night out of town, so we missed it unfortunately. But they told me yeah, it was pretty awesome. It was, yeah, it was fun. Was they told time. me, yeah, yeah. I had many friends hanging out there, and I heard so many stories from uh, that party. Yeah, we missed out. Well, I came to you guys through uh, Johnny Coffin. Oh, cool. Yeah, the Coffin Case. Yeah. And um, how did you get hooked up with him? Well, uh, basically that happened a year and a half ago when I uh, came out with my first solo record because I moved out here three years ago and nobody knew me. I like toured a lot when I was in Europe with my old project. I did a lot but I never toured the States so nobody really knew me here so I had to start from zero. And so I came out with uh, a new record, a new EP, a solo EP as Brandon Ashley. And um, uh, we did a video with Chad Michael Ward, and um, of, like for the single "My Decade on Thursday." And then uh, somehow, like on the internet, like Johnny Coffee, like saw the video, and uh, he just contacted me. It was like, "I think the video is great. The song is great. The project is great. I just want to bring it to the next level and start working together." 
there was a lot of enthusiasm. I was really happy, of course, because I didn't really, I was not working with anybody here in LA at that time. And then that's when basically we decided to create the dark. That's when we came up with the dark. It was coming straight from my first solo project. It was the mothership of the dark, but. When we really started, like you know, playing seriously, it was like when uh, Johnny and I met, and then like you know, with Sonny, we just came out with the whole thing, and uh, that happened probably like a year and a half ago. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. I uh, really appreciate. It. We really appreciate you uh, letting us play both of your songs. Um, that's really cool. I, I know that they're really unreleased, and yet you guys are releasing them. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks for having us. Uh, let's uh, plug you guys' website, thedarkofficial.com. There you're going to have tour dates and um, all your videos that people can see, and uh, all the latest, of course, information. We leave you now with My Decadent Thursday. <laughs> 